Hi, this is Tony. And Elaine Perna. And you're listening to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Ian Taylor, and I've got no idea what I'm doing. Uh, and welcome to the Marvel Card Collectors Podcast. Um, we're using StreamYard this week, so if there's any uh, clumsiness, then tough quite frankly, because I've never used it before today. Um, with me uh, to watch me fumbling around is Webby. Hey, all. I don't know why I said Webby rather than Wesley. I think it's because it says that on the screen. Yeah. Um, and, and we are joined by, quite frankly, Hobby Royalty is how I um, refer to him. You'll know him as Keith Boyle. A lot of people know him as K2. Um, but uh, we, are, we, are, we are also blessed to have his new handle on the screen at Hobby Archival. How are you doing, Thanks. Keith? I'm bipolar, I guess, now at this point in time with all these different uh, identities. To be fair, it's not unusual for people in the hobby to have multiple identities. <laughs> so you, 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 you're, joining, you're joining a long line of them. Um, so, Keith, uh, you, you have, when's the last time? You were on, you've not been on for over a year, have you? Um, it would have been a little bit. I remember yeah. you're, this is... Uh, I always seem to just sign on while I'm in my back room here and all this. So uh, this is uh, a different back room that we're in this time. So, uh, yeah, it's been a while that uh, we actually uh, uh, got an official warehouse and moved most of our stuff off site. And uh, now this is a little small studio that we do all our um, um, live shows from and things like that for the store. Mm. So that, that, that's that been quite a big shift in, in the last year. From uh, In fact, I remember when it was. It was kind of late spring last year and it was a hobby it was a hobby questions episode uh, yeah that sounds right yep. yeah and i think amanda was on it as well mm -hmm. um if i remember correctly um or k3 am i allowed to publicly call her k3 uh, I, I think i think you can be public and know she's k3 okay good good because i ain't editing this out i've got no idea how to do that <laughs> um so um in that time you've dived in a lot to i just want to i know we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about in a minute but i want to talk about your kind of foray into whatnot because you weren't whatnotting last year no i've done a i've done a little bit of whatnot at that point in time um realistically my hobby journey right now is so split up you know there's the the version of me that wants to collect the cards that i want to collect uh they especially the retro hobbyist that's going out there and getting stuff that was I call it the pre epac eras, right? Um, yeah. And then there's the the current collector in me that's uh, jamming on way too many sets because there's just so many options out there. Uh, and then um, I've always it's it's now 16 years that we've run the um, the local card shop. Um, I want more comics in Thornton, Colorado. And for that, um, I've always wanted Marvel cards to be a bigger part of what we do in the store. Um, there's a challenge to it, which has to do with that you can only get so much of it visually on the floor. You know, yeah, it, yeah, it's, yeah. it takes up a lot of space if you want to show off a lot of cards. Um, so um, that's where internets and technologies and all that fun stuff and whatnot became really big for that because it's a it's a great little platform for you to be able to showcase, run live shows, interact directly, make sales, uh, and it gravitates to um doing uh hobby breaks you know to doing uh you know different stuff and we've really steered into doing uh character case breaks where you know sell off each individual character uh let them uh let the 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 people bid up uh based upon the popularity and then um everything that's opened up inside the case you'd get so for mm. my, my my friends here that are that are both on the screen in front of me you know like you guys might be fighting each other for that black cat spot or you might have uh you know played rock paper scissors ahead of time for the show and decided who was going to get to, to bid this time <laughs> but um it's a good opportunity to especially like like you know character collectors can get in on new product instead of mm. you know ending up buying a box and and sitting there with a lot of cards that you may not be good for your own fit mm. so what not what not's a good platform for that i think that there's there's a lot of be benefits and advantages um, for everybody that gets into it for live bidding. It's the biggest advantage is what we, you can run a show with that. Uh, yeah. But it's strangely, as much as it is about a sales platform, it's become a real big community. And people, uh, especially buyers, know each other on it very, very well. Shout out to each other, tag each other on stuff that they would like. And um, it's become a fun environment for them. That's, that's I, I, I wasn't aware of that. 
I have to say, because um, I, I, I mean, I don't whatnot, partly because uh, time zones and uh, partly because I don't really have time to add that to my kind of, th you know, to my realm of things that I kind of um, surf, surf within, what with Facebook and Discord and Instagram and X or whatever it's called now, <clears> although I don't tend to use that so much. Um, but I, uh, what I f find interesting is that it's, from a person, from from the point of view who's someone who doesn't do whatnot, I've noticed the shift because it's absent. I remember, wow, let me think, about three, four years back in MCCW, people used to go live and open boxes all the time. Mm -hmm. in MC now barely anyone does it in the Facebook group. Now, they're not kind of doing the sale element of it as well that whatnot it, it establishes, enables you to do. But uh, a lot of people are just choosing to do it in other platforms mm -hmm. rather than in, in the community itself. Um, in fact, I don't even really see, I'm, I'm not even sure you can live stream that kind of thing within Discord, but you know, a lot of people do it on YouTube or Instagram and then share it somewhere else. So do you, um, do you find that people have migrated to whatnot? Or well, are there kind of people like me who just, haven't or can't for whatever reason i i look at it as just one of these other tools right? right i mean what's what's your goal today you know if you're if you're out there and looking for uh to add to your collection or to enjoy your collection right what's what's the goal that we're working on today and if, and a lot of enjoying obviously can be watching other people's content to see what's mm -hmm. there um i have moved uh just box breaks and uh information like that mostly to instagram and that comes from that with a direct feed in instagram and notifications that you're going live i don't feel like you get the same in facebook anymore facebook feels like you're kind of lost at sea like a post yeah. can go up and definitely people can scroll and find it but like in the live and in the moment um i always feel like sometimes i miss i miss the notifications it's potluck um, yeah, and so uh, other platforms may do that a little bit better. You know, may 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 have it, and again, using the the right tool for for the job uh, mm. type thing. So um, Instagram's purely driven off of visuals, right? You know, it's it's about video and 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 image, and it is way easier to turn around and scroll your feed and looking at that. We're all looking at the pictures. We're not even really reading the content until the picture grabs our attention on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas yeah. on Facebook, maybe it is more informational. Maybe I do want to to do that. So uh, I think I'd love to sell some cards on Instagram, but I don't do that because I, I don't quite understand how to grab people's attention on that well. But on Facebook, it's it can be pretty good. And, you know, like some of the search tools inside Facebook are stronger if you're looking for certain words. You're trying to fill yeah. out your flare collection right now, you know, something like that. Yeah. You know, like it's it's easier to kind of kind of do that and go into groups for that. Um. <clears throat> One of the um, one of the interesting things that I remember a few years back is trying to do a live on Facebook on the podcast page, and it was an absolute disaster because Facebook actually took away functionality. You used to be able to kind of stream with someone else. You, I don't think you can do that now as a page. Mm -hmm. I have guests on, so I actually think Meta themselves have pushed that functionality to instagram because that's where they they want it you know mm -hmm. so well, you know, on both, they're, yeah they're, they're they're choosing the platform that they want to support which, which yeah. Type of things are. yeah 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 exactly um so talk to me about um hobby archival because that's you've you've rebranded your instagram uh -huh. um if i remember correctly um to hobby archival but you've also got a youtube as well so yep. what's what's the kind of the the idea behind the uh, the, the name hobby archival? Where's that well, going? And it was problem solving. I mean, it was really I was I was looking at issues that I had as a store who wanted to again sell sell cards and product. Um, Marvel cards are, again. Back to it. It's it's very visual. You know, you want to see the card. You want to see what's going yeah, yeah. on. And we're not. I'm not even talking about like inspecting the condition of a card. I'm just talking about. Um, that you want to turn around and and know that you're getting the right image that you remember from childhood. Was that the 91 set? Was that the 90 set? You know, things like that. Um, so 
first for me to be able to list singles and put that type of stuff on my own web page to be able to sell all the product that I have, I was going to need scans, I was going to need details, I was going to need information. Um, and then it crossed over into the collecting side that um, I saw some things like I especially want to make sure that my checklists and my wish lists are up to date. Um, this is a great one I can think of is that in one of the FLIR retros, 2013 or 2015, um, on, and again, right resources, and we should shout out every one of them, that's great, and all this, uh, 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 the House of Checklists, um, we all use that. It's it was, Jeff Allender, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is a fantastic resource for, for that. It's not maintained as much anymore, and I think that a lot of that faded away because you could get the checklist directly off of EPAC a lot of times, you know, like it's, you know, like it wasn't so necessary like it was in the, yeah. the darker, darker ages of information. I think it's a bigger thing, actually. I think he stopped updating it as, as COVID hit. So if you look um, at it, it's it it doesn't get updated at all now. Yeah, I don't think he's he's touched it. In, and I'm dying to, if anyone's got a lead to Jeff Allen, though, I'd love to have him on the podcast. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he to me is, is one of the grandfathers of helping us collect because yeah. com bringing that information together so that, I could do it. But I looked at the 2013 or 2015 checklist for Flare Retro, and there is flare prints on there. And I've never seen these. And they sound like they're like the case toppers from the 90s, like oversized mm. ones. And anyone who I've spoken to about this hasn't had good information about what they are. But as I collect that set, I'd like to have it if it's part of the set, you know, as my as part of my, you know, what my version of a master set is. If it's obtainable, if it's something out there, I'd like to have it. But I basically don't have proof of life. You know, I don't know that yeah. it's out there. So am I really looking for this? Am I really searching for it and all this? Well, between that and then the last, you know, hope, hope, hope to get this motivated was um, I was collecting on EPAC. Um, anime uh, the first anime all peach momoko yeah and i watched a couple people uh and i definitely will not name names because again it's you know context is everything and i, I yeah. what i saw is is not all the details but i watched people talk about um the limited amount of what something was or the unlimited amount of what a card was and try to get it for a certain value and uh this especially uh ran around because of the chibis the tier four chibis in that set um, were very limited. There's five of them. They're one in my number. I think in my head is sixteen hundred packs. You know, they're mm -hmm. it's 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 a tough find. It's a, it's a super <laughs> short print. Um, but there were people that were convincing others. Hey, trade it to me. It's it's not that big of a card. Yeah, it's not a real size card. You know, nobody cares about it. Things like that. But they were kind of starting to hoard it. I did the math backwards on them. There are so few of those cards out there. It's, it's crazy. And you can see where somebody was turning around and taking some information and using it just for the personal gain. And I think that part of that's okay. You know, it's okay if you're going to use what you know to, to turn around and to try to fuel, you know, fuel your collection. I think the line is crossed when you use it for the expense at the expense of someone else. Yeah. So I came up with the idea. What if there was just the an open source everybody can contribute we can pool all this information together we can get stories and information who knows anything about the impel printing counts and things like that right now i mean some of it you can find you can find masterpieces had originally you know serial number boxes um but that information that some people do know that they're not even hoarding they just don't think to like put it somewhere that everybody yeah. else can find it would make sense to gather it up and have everybody have an opportunity to see it and that everybody could share in with what they know you know something i don't i know something you may not you know it's mm. it's but if we all put it in the same spot if we all have and it came up in my head about a wiki and doing something along those lines and so this all just rolled together to like hey let's just talk about the hobby kind of leave behind the current value of a card right we've seen that fluctuate high and low based upon certain things that's going to be transitory information but the history of the cards and the amount that were printed and the print runs and the real checklists and examples are not yeah. always easily at our fingertips why don't we bring that information together and just make it you know what it is and present it and 
with all these new collectors. They keep jumping in. They keep seeing stuff and all this. And and how many times do we see somebody put something up that's not like the most, you know, hyped up or or known set? I'll take ninety eight uh, Marvel Creators Choice, and somebody posts up some pictures from it. And they go, "Wow, that's cool. I've never knew about that." And I mm. sat there. I went, "Man, we should just tell everybody about every set." There's really yeah. not that much out there. Like there, as far as sets, if everybody got to see everything and, and got to pick at, or especially a character collector got a comprehensive list of every card that their character was on, and they could choose which ones they want to chase, this is just info. This is just fun. Yeah. I mean, you're extending your hobby value because we buy a box today, 200, 900, whatever, don't care. But are we just opening up, flip, 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 finding the biggest one and just focusing on that and moving on? Or do we have a chance to go in there and kind of appreciate all the cards all the way and talk about why this was fun and talk about why, oh, I didn't really love that set. And, you know, but but doing it from a spot where um, I get an extra hour out of enjoyment out of my cards, then I and it didn't cost me a dollar. Yeah. Yeah. That It's... Um as people listen to this watch it whichever they choose to do consume it at your own peril um that was the wrong word we the the episode that would have been up the week before is one about hobby misinformation and it we recorded it about three months ago actually <clears throat> and it was kind of i was i was raging when we recorded it um so hopefully it doesn't come across too much because i tried to be kind of quite calm about it but there was a card that someone had posted up for initially anonymous valuation that was from a Marvel Gems set. Um, and it is uh, one of the male diamond cards, male mm -hmm. character diamond cards. Now, those, um, even on Jeff's website, which is brilliant, don't get me wrong, but, you know, Jeff's a human and human make, humans make mistakes. So... Um, and there aren't many other sites that carry Marvel Gems as information. I mean, you've got Trading Card Database, which is fine. You know, it is what it is. I find the user interface a bit clunky on that myself. But um, and there's Beckett. So you know, there are some sources, but that, you know, there isn't. There isn't really. A, what's the expression? A single source of truth, as it were. Um, and so, and this. Uh, the individual that was 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 commenting on this post was frankly giving out incorrect information, saying it was a it was a it was a fraudulent card, you know, it was a uh, counterfeit card, and all this sort of stuff, and was was just like lots of people were throwing perfectly solid intel out. No, nope, didn't want to hear it, just kept spouting on, and that, that's just one example. But it, it struck me as there's a there's um whether it's purposeful or accidental and purposeful speaks to your example with the chibis um that you know people do you know with with the explosion and proliferation of content people do misspeak people do misremember mm -hmm. and unfortunately that might get out there and all of a sudden it becomes someone else's truth mm -hmm. about whatever that element of the set is um and i i i you know i find, I find that maddening because i would hate for someone to read that post about a really interesting set, Marvel Gems. I mean, it's a f fascinating set. Um, mm. About that particular card, which is a high-end, sought-after character, very limited. You know, I think it's estimated that there's five out there, but it's not numbered, um, if I remember correctly. And and don't take that. Don't take my word for that, folks. <laughs> Having just said that, someone says it out loud, it becomes true. Um, it just it just bugs me. So yes, it would be great if there is not held in any one place or for any one purpose, but open to everyone, a place where someone could go, actually, I just went and checked this. And it's kind of like, you know, it's crowdsourced, you know, all the, all the intel, because some people know more about this set. Some people know more about this set. Webby, I'm sure you know about certain sets more than, more than others. Um, ask me a question about Masterpieces 2007, 2008. You know, right. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the guy, <laughs> I'm the guy on that one because I went in deep on those. So, um, and I'm not, you know, I'm not all knowledgeable about them as well. You know, every day is a new day at school. So I guess, what, you know, if if last week was about hobby misinformation, I think this week is about hobby, what, information. Well, yeah. and you, 
you end up in a, I remember the conversation you were talking about and I had nothing to contribute to it myself because I didn't know that set, mm -hmm. but I see things like that. There was a, there was an example in the groups of uh, someone who had potentially counterfeited or altered um, sketches from those late 90s sets you know the creator's choice the silver yep. age because that is it, it was a, it was very early into sketch cards and there was a lot of things when they stamped those cards they thought that was the authentication that would make it easy but still most of them were drawn in pencil and could yep. be altered or things, things like this but when i saw people talking with definitive information about that that was strictly wrong I actually got so mad I left the hobby for a couple months. I took a step back because it was that frustration about it. Um, it's a detail out there that I know a part of. I don't know definitively, but I'd love to get with other people who know this. The One of the things is, is that Skybox at that time, when they were doing the first cards and they handed them out to some very, very high profile um, uh, comic artists, these people that are historical and Hall of Fame level kind of things. My understanding is it came back where some of those came to the back to Skybox unsigned. Like it just was a, we missed it. It was autopilot. Ramita didn't sign this. Yeah. And that someone at Skybox applied signatures. And then they were inserted in the packs. And wow. then they went out like that. But I've had people who have definitively said, oh, that's not his signature. That's not Ramita's signature. So that's definitely a faked card. Somebody, somebody faked that. Well, whereas it's not really a faked card. It was done differently in the process. And I would say if you knew all the information, you could rank a sketch by Ramita with a Ramita good signature as probably more desirable than a sketch by Ramita with a after put on signature hmm. versus obviously we should have no value at all for counterfeits or, or yeah. alter, you know, things that were deliberately deceitfully altered. Um, yeah. But we all don't know this information, right? We don't know that these things kind of exist. We don't, it, and a lot of it comes from, well, I remember this because I was there, and I remember this because I was told, and that you can't source it correctly anymore. Mm -hmm. And as I get older, you know, my memory seems to fade. So yep. let's write it down. <laughs> yeah. Let's get it to where we can all talk about it realistically and write it down. And then, and then potentially, what if we found the person at Skybox who could come through and correct it? and give us yeah. the best kind of information but it's just not out there in a spot like like i said house of checklist is amazing it's it's a great spot if it's not being updated anymore if we're not getting any kind of corrections into it then it has its it has its limited use it has its its cap to it if we look towards epac or checklists um but what happens if 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 that site uh evolves and doesn't have it anymore it's just like the old good information on Rittenhouse uh, cool. is really tough to find anymore, but you still do have the internet wayback machine, the archive where yes. you can go and you can find the yeah. information, but let's just bring it into a more searchable format. Mm. And that's 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 where we started with the, the fandom site um, that we've started to populate with sets and with images and with details. And, and I wanted to go all the way. I want to be able to go into a checklist and see that the card number five is Wolverine. But then I can click on the Wolverine and I get over to the Wolverine page and I can see all that stuff there. I want to nice. see that we credited the artist and we can go back to the artist page. And I especially want to be able to say, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of certain um, sketch artists, even though I don't collect sketch cards myself. But what's all the sets that Tony Perna did? What if I was decided that my collection now is going to be one Tony Perna card from every set that he did? Can I get a list of all the sets that he was on? Mm. Well, I mean, again, we can we can message Tony because he's a great guy. But you know, like having a resource there that even like mm. kind of like promotes or facilitates his idea. But this circular, find the information in a structured way and be able to to find it the way you want to see it. You care about the collectors. I care about the sets. Yeah. We all care about the images. Whatever. Let's just put it all out there and make it where everybody can turn around and see. And then to Marvel Gems on the Marvel Gems page, we'd have a picture of that. We'd have the uh, um, checklist up so that you would see it, and, and it would be a lot more definitive. Yeah. This card, while what are what are called, in comic books, they're called ghosts. So a 
a comic book that is so rare that you just never find it. It's it's called a ghost. You know, it's just it's never spotted. Well, there's a lot of cards like that in this. We know, you know, like the 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 Stan Lee Mike Waringo uh, stuff from Creator. Yeah. Sets, the, I think everybody knows Mirage has existed in 95 Masterpiece, but not everybody's ever seen one. Mm -hmm. you know, it's the rarities. Well, the, yeah. the, the gathering that information so everybody can can enjoy it too. See, that's <clears throat> fascinating to me, that concept of ghost cards, because there are... So something... I don't know if you do this, Wesley, um, I'm because I'm a bit of a nutter with this. Yeah. But uh, thanks for agreeing so readily. <laughs> um, the, the, um, with my black cat um collecting when something's pulled that's a limited or one of one i immediately capture an image of it off epac be before it goes and gets gets lost so um or if i see it on ebay or if i see it on um uh, comc is not so bad actually i mean i do capture the images off comc mm -hmm. but comc stuff stays there so as an example i can go on to comc and i can search for um Fleer Ultra Spider-Man 2017 Gold PMG, which is the one of one. Mm -hmm. Now, I know it was sold very soon after EPAC release for less than three hundred dollars. Someone okay. told me he's got access to that because you can, you know, see sold prices if you pay yeah. a certain thing. Um I don't even want to get started with that. It makes me swear. You think, Wesley, I make you swear every time I get something. But that made me swear that day. Um, but you can still see the image of it. So at least, you know, at the moment, until they change that site. And that's the thing. You can't take this for granted because, as you said, the Rittenhouse site that I remember on this podcast with the former co-host, we went through the Rittenhouse website and we were effusing about the fact that it was a resource and it was brilliant. What do written house do? They go and change their website. They take down a load of old content, probably because they're paying to host the stuff, you know, because yeah. there was so much on there. There was um, lists of sketch artists and the earlier sets. There were how many they'd done. You had images of, I mean, on some of the early sets, you had images of a lot of the cards mm -hmm. and a lot of the sketch cards. It was absolutely crazy. Wow. Um, and th this stuff, and if you think back to... Um, Scoundrel is a great example. So Scoundrel mm -hmm. is still there. You can still go and look through the stuff. But all the images? Forget about it. Dead photo bucket link. Dead photo. I mean, that place is like a graveyard for photo bucket links. It's, it's so frustrating. So the info's there. You can still go and dig into it. You know, if you're, at some point, someone's going to take that site down. Mm -hmm. I mean, for all I know, it's gone down now. I haven't looked at it for about two months. But, yeah. you know, it's going to go. So, and Jeff Allender's site, if he's no longer updating it, at some point, he'll probably stop paying that bill. Gone. So, yeah. you know, I think it's important for this um, stuff to be out there. And the other thing I find interesting is this concept of the fact that there are people who knew about Marvel Gems who fed into that. So the, the, the Marvel Gem gem experts, I guess, you know, there are people who've gone after that set and have looked into it. There are people who've really gone into 2013, 2015 Fleer Retro, which I know very little about. Um, there are people who are nuts about Marvel Universe 1990. And I know of at least two people separately to each other who've gone off and made spreadsheets of and tracked down who all the artists are. But they've done that. Because they're siloed, you know. Not, <laughs> they don't know right. they've done it. So, wouldn't it be great if it, if you know, they could collectively both bring their efforts together, combine it with what you're doing, resource mm -hmm. for everyone to use and everyone to access and everyone to learn from. You know, yeah. democratically, mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. it's probably the best way. Um, Somebody. Uh... Somebody that uses the term "extend your hobby value" obviously has a love for this hobby. How how did how did you get started in it? Oh, me personally, yeah. yeah. Um, I I've always been drawn to collecting something. I I remember. I think the first thing I really hard collected was coins because it was easy to, to get pennies and nickels off of mom and dad and get those little snap in boxes. Well, you know, fold out 
that you could just find one from 1955. I've got some of those. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just it was a blast and all this. So then it transformed into going to local stores that would have coins so I could search for, you know, mom's purse is not going to always have a 1939 penny, which doesn't have to be expensive. just has to be one that I don't have in my book. Yeah. Um, and then while you're there, you, you look at the other options. You see comic books. You see um, extra uh, uh, pieces like uh, um, uh, cards. And so I remember, I definitely remember in middle school seeing the 1990 Marvel Universe cards and being amazed by them and then i remember probably starting to buy with like some 92 packs like i had a little bit of fun in that i got hardcore into it as hardcore as you can be when you don't have your own license to drive around into uh 94 Fleer ultra x Men, and begging mom we gotta go check the walmarts and then the walmarts have these packs and they need to find these packs because they've got these extra cards and i can't find them anywhere else yeah not knowing at the time that silver crossovers were going to be the thing that we were still talking about 25 mm. 30 years you know but i just wanted to have them because i wanted to complete my set it was on the checklist i needed to to finish the checklist you know the printed checklist um is so quickly discarded by upper deck today but what they what they miss in that idea and maybe it's just not the design of collecting anymore it drove you this desire to like finish it to flush it out to like to have that kind of thing so um, that ha that had it, and I, I guarantee you, having checklists fed me into this idea too. That I wanted to have something to work up and something to put there. And then I wanted to talk real quickly and mention to your idea about again these these resources that could go away or could get broken. It was a large concern of mine right away. Like imagine putting in a whole bunch of time and effort into something, thinking you're building up something great, and then it's gone because you don't you don't have the you know it, whatever you did you you lost a hard drive i mean I, we've all lost data you know like you know, that type of thing so um i picked the, the 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 website fandom which is all fan-based uh wikis um because they're so large it is monetized with their advertising so i feel like as a business that they they've got their way to make make money and i'm i'm fine with that but they give us the resources to hold, post up everything, to make the pages, to do all of that type of stuff for free. And so um, the pages as they are created, um, anyone can right now go to what I've what I've started up with the, the Marvel Card Collecting uh, Wiki on there. You can create your own pages. You can add to them. I had hoped that what I was going to do ahead of time was to really set up and establish a, um, a format because data is the most useful useful if it follows like a universal format that we all yep. can see it and and flow through it and it doesn't mean that like the first format that i came up with is the definitive answer it just means like here's my suggestion here's all the things i think we include when later on the community says hey you know you really should have included this on every one of the cards we could have had this information on here and it would have been better and all and we can all just add to it we can all just yeah. you know add on and and go from there so but I feel that putting all that information on a public site like that, where everyone can edit and everyone can kind of get into it, if it turns out six months from now, I get bored, I don't get it, I don't want to do this anymore, it doesn't really matter because it's it's public and it's open and anybody else can get into it and, and edit. And then most specifically, the biggest, largest problem that we have with that, the, the, the wiki today is, I don't put enough hours into it. It's gonna take, so many hundreds of thousands yeah. of hours it feels like to document and scan and upload everything i'm not going to get it done myself and i want it to be um anyone who else can wants to be part of this wants to 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 find enjoyment in in some of the the notating or bringing information to the table can do that or let's say it's like i said i wanted to have a full database of of which um uh, sketch artists were on which sets let's say somebody's like well you know I, i'd love to do that i'm a sketch artist but i'm not tech savvy there'll be ways to you know email somebody who will help them put the information onto it and we it's all volunteer based nobody's going to get time off of this the the monetization of that website is all to fandom to pay for hosting and i'm fine with that mm -hmm. who cares um, but it's also a public website it's not anywhere behind a wall that somebody can decide who's in or who's out again yeah. 
as great, uh, I have no knock about uh, MCCW. I wouldn't say anything about, you know, holding people out of MCCW. I think that the, the, the community there is great. And the only people that have been removed or held out and all this have good reason to not be part of the community. Um, but you still had to know about it. You still had to turn around and join it. You still yep. had to come into it. And it's not public and searchable. Whereas somebody who all of a sudden picks up and says, Marvel Bronze Age from Rittenhouse. What was that all about? <coughs> Google search. Maybe the link comes up. Maybe that becomes a source of information and you just mm -hmm. have it. Google tells you about it. And again, you can just have that information publicly that anyone can find it and no one can decide who's allowed in the, the room or not in the room. And the information is just wildly out there. It's why the site, the site had a focus on any information that we had about a set, um, then checklists and images and credits to the artists who worked on it and any other card note specific. I, I think of this like 2019 uh, flare that's on that site as I built it up. Um, one of the cards, and I'm going to space on which one it is. Dennis is going to beat me up because I don't remember. But one of the cards does not have a pack pulled auto. And it says on the checklist, this this card, the pack pulled autos do not exist. And the, the reason was is that they were lost in the mail between Brazil and here. I hope it's Brazil. Um, great. Now we know that information. While everybody's out there racking their minds trying to say, why is there no auto for this card? Well, we put that. And we put a note next yeah. to it and tell people why. And you can, you know why you're not complete if that's what you were you were trying. Like, this card never comes up. Well, there's a reason. There, 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 there it is right there. Mm. And then the last area that I thought was really interesting, and this was more of a track the hobby area, I created an area in there for grading census. So take a set and i've done this on a couple of the sets and you go to each one of the grading companies the major grading companies of i was using psa cgc beckett and uh sgc right <coughs> search it once a month and you would do it of how many cards for that set were graded how many of them were tens how many of them were nines and what i liked about the information was is a is this set gaining in popularity with people grading it and putting the information out there B, does this set just always 10? You know, we look at the platinum cards that are being graded right now. All those high grades, right? Has anybody seen a five? Yeah. I've never seen a five on that on that set. Fantastic. I'm glad they did a good job on producing that cards and they come out of the pack really sharp and really clean and and that. But what's the real mean grade and mean being average to, for everybody, you know, I'm not being a bad guy. Um, what's the, the average grade on a 1990 Marvel Universe? We know the centering problems. We know all of those types of things. We know that the front and back don't even have to be centered to each other. So is this a set that a 10 is really, really rare? Well, archive it once a month. You know, was the was the whole goal in the hope it's never really gonna turn out to that. But what if it's every six months and we just see that in life? <laughs> nobody's grading the set. Nobody cares. It's it's about the same as it was. Or all of a sudden when if we monitored like the month to month or quarter to quarter of how many 1990 Marvel Universe cards were graded, you know, since the boom and all this, and we now see that 20,000 cards of that are graded. You yeah. know, it's 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 obviously where the popularity is for graded cards, you know, and, and have that information. So I thought that stuff was fascinating. I thought it was interesting things to see. And again, the biggest deal there was is how do these cards grade? You know, am I expecting it to come out of the pack if I buy an old box as a as a real you know, coin flip as to whether I've got a good card or whether, you know, everybody's getting tens on this. Um, can I can I just um, take a pause to welcome Josh? Josh, welcome. Hey. Keith, how are you? Good, how Josh, are you? how are you doing? <clears throat> a little technical difficulty this morning. <laughs> set, actually set the alarm way too early. Woke up first thing going, what am I doing? What's going on? Why am I <laughs> going back to bed? Yeah. This is awful. And then, yeah, so... Sorry, um, coming in late here, but it is really interesting kind of um, listening to how, you know, you came up with and the access you decided to give. I think it's a huge, uh, it was a huge move to have it accessible by anyone to be able to make additions to um, in order to grow it. Because, yeah, yourself, something, a, a amount of data this large mm. for one person, this just seems near impossible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I did recently take a look. What one of the and again this this comes from two sided. I'm a, I, I, one of my big things also is hard, hobby archival. You're going to hear me talk about this a lot under that hat. Is that 
know the reason for the source of your information. And what I mean by that is that there are times that I could tell you things about a set because I might have a lot of that to sell. You know, right. like I, I sell stuff. I sell cards. I sell sure. singles. I sell boxes. Am I telling you that to pump up a set because I think you need to go buy boxes of it? Well, hopefully I'm not. But, you know, like just understand the source of your information about this. Well, one of the big deals for me, of course, is I do want to sell the singles and I need good images because that's just not, a, you know, terribly available on the Internet. So I've I bought a, a scanner, uh, a little feeder scanner. I'm now up to close to 30,000 images of my own cards scanned and sitting on a little network drive that, I, that I'm going to be using for this type of thing because, and that's fronts and backs of all these cards. Right. And some of them don't scan well. Don't You can't scan vibranium cards to make them look mm -hmm. like anything like, like that kind of thing. You know, the reflective just doesn't work. Right. There are good tech, technic, uh, techniques to get that to work. You also can't scan through this uh, little feeder scanner uh, any of the uh, FLIR Ultra, Masterpiece, you know, 80-point kind of cards. That's right, yeah. not a thing that works. Um, so um, it's uh, – but but getting all those images together and, and putting them up what is going to be two-sided benefit for me is because I love to have the, the checklist visual. But also number two is that as I get a set put together, I'll, I'll add my singles to my own website so that I can turn around and, you know, make it – it's part of my job. So it's – it's been a blast for that side of things. And I really think that there can't be enough credit given to the predecessors of this, um, of, of House of Checklists, of having that. Trading card database is 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 user-driven, is community-driven. Uh, I started this journey, now that I'm really thinking about it, probably back in 05, 06. Um, there is wow. a website out there called Comic Collector Live that is a... Uh, it was designed as both software for your desktop to track your comic collection, and it's an online marketplace of its own. It had designs to be very, very large and very big. It had, if there's a there's an era about two, three years that there's a whole bunch of ads actually in the back of your comics for it. Um, and I know the guys that were there, it was another community-driven sourced information. Uh, and I got involved there. I was a moderator, and I, and then they opened it up and decided, hey, we're going to allow some other stuff in here, including trading cards. And so a lot of the trading cards that are on there are my scans, and I was building it out, all of the, the Marvel Universe, the Masterpiece stuff that's on that website, wow. because I was contributing and I was putting it up there because that's what I wanted. I wanted a resource where I could you know, catalog my entire collection and, and do all, all, those, all those pieces uh, and have that. So... Um, this has been this has been something I'm interested in and love to have for a long, long period of time. Very wow. cool. I love How, it. Uh, man and boy. Yeah, I was going to ask. The... Go ahead, keep going, Josh. Sorry, Wes. Um, <clears throat> I was going to ask what that first, what that inspiration was. What what were some of the first there um, that you know that got you to that point? Um, and when you mentioned as far as the data for grading results, that is really interesting because a lot of us talk about what certain sets are grading out at and what they're known for. What's the, as you say, mean, um, the happy medium, whatever it is um, for some of these. And so when you kind of start to take a look at some of that, that can really help you out when you're collecting and when you're trying to decide what to grade and, and things like that. So. I, I would imagine that's probably going to be one of the only places to find that source of information. Well, it's all an opportunity to kind of like everybody can kind of add and decide what's what's good, what's bad. And again, it's it's part of a page. You're like, oh, I don't care about grading. Yeah, don't not not why you come there. Not what not what you have to read up on this. But I really consider and think about all the people. If you wanted to make a list right now of people that you know in the hobby, that you talk to in the hobby, that you go to to ask the questions, you know, that you know. These people know this type of stuff. And yeah. it is fantastic that they're involved. It's fantastic that they're approachable and that you can have those kind of conversations. But what happens if they're hit by a bus? What institutional knowledge are we all losing out on? Because, you know, sure. like it, it it wasn't shared in a in an archive. And that's that's literally when I toyed with an idea. A name, something to come up that, that meant something about this. The idea, the the archive, and the the kind of thing. It, it just became so resonating um, because it was just like, what would we go to? You know, like 
it, this could have been the Marvel card, the library. It could have been, you know, like the, you know, the encyclopedia, right? Like there's a lot of words that evoke the idea of the, of what we're trying to, to kind of get to. I thought wiki was too kitsch. Like that's, I, I wanted this to, to feel historical that, you know, we're, mm -hmm. we're saving this for future people to, to come into, you know, and when somebody joins into Marvel cards today or five years from now, um, this is the type of thing that can, can spark them. There was a post just this week in MCCW, not somebody who's like, look at all these cards that we're just going back through and just enjoying with my son and just looking at and having a blast. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I'm, I'm glad you had that in your hands, but not everybody starts with having all that type of stuff. So where can we create a, the, the, the virtual catalog for it? Mm. And where can we, I heard this from Upper Deck, they're never going to put it on their website. They're not going to you know, document that thing. But where can we document it so that we all can share in that, that pool of information? Yeah. i tell you one of the other things. In this age, because it's, it's changed massively. From, from the 90s, everything was physical marketing. So it was all designed around promotional materials that went out through all the available mediums of the time. So it was magazines. It was comic book stores. It was promo cards within comic books, you know, stuff that stapled into comic books, you know, all of that stuff that's there. Nowadays, that doesn't exist. But <clears throat> excuse me, what does exist are the digital assets that are created to promote stuff, because those are the channels that people use. So rather than print loads of stuff and send it out, they're putting that money into creating assets various mediums so it's gonna sound crazy i haven't done it so much over the last 18 months but i went for a phase of of almost maniacally saving all the official images the headers the news article images from the upper deck epac website because that was the primary kind of thing and if you if you take it back a step for the physical release upper deck would put out official imagery on their Facebook page, on their Twitter feed, on their Instagram, and it would be the same stuff, just reformatted slightly. But it's the only place that went. Because the stuff that went out to the dealers and well, the distributors went out three to five, six months before was probably different to what Upper Decks share at the time of release, because they often you know, that stuff often changes massively. Hello, Black Cat image from the Spider-Man Metal Universe set. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and, you know, the look of the cards changes. Some card elements just completely disappear. Um, so I, I think it's that there is, um, I think there is a place for so get, get capturing that stuff. You know, I've got a folder on my Google Drive full of like, official Upper Deck promotional material that's the, a digital format. Will it ever be useful in any way, shape, size, or form? Will it ever find a, find a home on? <laughs> sorry, what's the name of it on fandom? Is it called Hobby Archival on fandom? I'm gonna that... look like real quickly because I kept a I kept a link up here. Send me the I'll... link. I'll pop it on screen. I'll pop it in the show notes as well. Yeah. So it is Marvel Collectible Marvel Dash Collectible Dash Cards. Dot uh, fandom. Okay. Dot Hang on. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna send it to. to Oh, okay. Save me oh, having to that. having to clumsily type it away. Yeah, pop it over to me. Um, if if you were another week into uh, um, Streamyard here, we might try to share the screen. But I don't know. If uh, gonna... I don't even know what button to present. <laughs> Honestly, I don't. I mean, there's a present button at the bottom here. It what does that do? Uh, it, it's a little present. A little ah, bit. share screen. There we go. So it is the button. No, I can. Yeah, send me the link. Send me the link on Messenger, and I'll share the screen. Fuck. Well, you just you put it in the private chat there too, didn't you? Oh, is there? A... <laughs> Josh, I've got no idea what's going on right now. Uh, uh, there's a private chat. There's a private chat. There it is. Wow, look at this. That's amazing. Look at this. I am the physical representation of that meme where people go. <laughs> like um, oh, keep keep sharing it. Keep sharing it. Right now, apparently, I can make this big as well. Um, so let me. Oh no, it's done it itself. Brilliant. So, I don't have to do anything. Yeah, so as an example here in all this, this is, again, one of my most built-out pages. Anime is a set I love. I, you know, absolutely into it and all this. And, again, you're going to get those ads. That's We're not paying for a version of this. We get ads. That's fine. But um, what, I tried to, what I tried to capture here, again, is just kind of a standardization. Again, like quick details, snapshot here, first released. You know, so there was a date that it came out. Um, 
little things like a, a genre. Like, so to me, this was an original art instead of comic sourced or instead of uh, movie sourced, right? Awesome. That's, that's, yeah, that's awesome. That's a great point there. Yeah. And, and again, people like different types of sets. So later on, we'll sort it that way so you can see just the types of set you care about. Um, from the publisher, this is what they had in their original pitches to everybody. And I had saved a copy of the sell sheet from that was sent out to through distribution. Then we nice. get into like overview here about what what's the configuration, five cards per pack, 16 packs per cards uh, per box, 16 boxes per case, which was really two eight box inner cases. Estimated print run. This is, I, I'm sorry, my upper deck friends, you're going to hate me for this type of stuff, but if I can calculate, I'm going to share it. I can estimate that there was 10,800 boxes produced to this. How do you get that? It's based upon one base autograph card per box. That was the distribution. That's what the averages were. So because we know an estimated print run, you can then backdoor certain things in here. Again, I'm going to use my chibi example. Some people are going to really get blown away by this. That tier four chibi was one in 2300 packs on hobby, one in 2250 packs on EPAC. And we'll wow. come back to that here in a second. There were exclusive cards, EPAC exclusive cards for the set, the different achievements, the different parallel, the, the spiral combines. And then when we get into a checklist here, here's the base set. And I put down any information in here, like what, again, repeating the stuff up at the top, how, which Mega Moons tier one were these numbers all the way up to this on this distribution. And then when you come into actually a checklist for this, oh, that's this great. is what I put together based upon scans. Wow. And you can turn around and blow it up. Yeah. That's oh, awesome. such a lovely set. <laughs> so I did a wow. scan, I did a scan of the back. I didn't repeat the back scan because it's actually the same for the next three. But then when and you then get to it goes to Japanese language, yeah, yeah. Mm. There's the Japanese language. When you get to the autograph, there's the congratulations. Yeah. And then out here at the end, we would have, I don't have images of all the printing plates, obviously. And there was card notes if it was, if it was applicable. For this set, I, I don't think there is much in the way of card notes. Like most things are pretty standardized. But I set this up to just be, you could browse the whole thing here pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take a look at your character and all this. Um, and then... I'm going to I'm going to jump ahead because it's going to get obviously there's a lot to a page if you're going to get this kind of level of deep to it. I haven't found a good way to scan my capsules yet. So that's that's coming. You can't feed those through the this, this scanner. Um, but like there's a great note one. So on the X-Men set, this beast is on twice. He's card 44 and 46 and has the same name and art on both cards. Wow. But here we're into chibis. And when we get to chibi fours here, there were five cards to the set. They were these. They were, this was the distribution. And because we know the approximate print run and the approximate distribution, there's a print run of 16 of each one of these cards. This is the one I was talking about. This was the crux of information that was bad information gotcha. floating around out there or was understood by few and not known by all. And so if you knew that there was, even though these are not numbered, if you knew it was a, as rare as 16, what are you going to trade this card at? What are you going to personally value these characters at? And it's that type of thing that, like, it's important to have this information. You know, here's yeah. those exclusive Absolutely. EPOs, and how did you get them? You got them for achievement, for complete set of idols, kaiju, and mechanics. These are what you got Black Widow for. It's that That's type amazing. of thing that I thought was a blast to, like... <laughs> everybody to know everybody to see these are very boring because all the backs are the same <laughs> <laughs> that's all right though uh consistency but, yeah it's the, it's the depth of yeah what you can kind of get to inside this entire set but again like you came here to like the uh the uh, uh the base image of uh the mechanized awesome. and you can even scroll it in here this is the autograph version, right? You can see exactly where they put the numbering, exactly what it is. If there's ever questions in the future about counterfeiting, you know, having a, a documented source here that we can compare it to yeah. is going to be powerful. 
Um, and then artist sketch artist list. What I would love to have, what I'll expand this into when we can get this artist, I'd like to have one more column here that would have one example of what they did in art and potentially one back where you could also compare the signature. Yeah, well, I think you need the signature as, as an isolated thing. Yeah, there should be that, a page on here that allows you to compare signatures. Yeah, but what, I'm, what I'm saying is there's a guy out there, I think it's Joe Reinwald or Jeff, I can't remember his name now, Jeff Reinwald, who's got that, uh, Rhino's gone crazy, who's got that site that he does with examples of artist signatures. Mm-hmm. I, that would be that be perfect kind of. I would of love for I would love for him to contribute and create the yeah. exact same thing on this, just having it in one spot. Not <laughs> because oh, we need we absolutely need it here, but it's again, how do we get this all into one location so yeah. that all your resources are with you? Yeah. And yeah, then yeah. this is what I was talking about with the historic grading population reports. When I recorded from PSA in April of twenty three for base, there was a total of fifty eight that were graded. 20 of them were either 10s or 9.5s because again i kind of combine those together because of how the different companies handle that yeah and then the nine population was also nine so we can see here of the 58 49 of the 58 were a nine or better that right. makes me think that this set grades very well absolutely but when we get to base autographs only 17 of the 35 that were graded are that high now could be that some of these 35 here that weren't graded 9 or 10 could have been qualified only, you know, like just to make sure it's authentic. Yeah. Could have been whatever, but it's just information. Do with it as you wish. And you can yeah. see that PSA has got 58 on the base. SGC had four on the base. And then CGC had 25 on the base, which, which companies are more popular. And if you really want to see this, one of the great parts that's already built into this is you can sort by your columns. Wow. And you can see here, and again, with, with PSA base, right? I recorded it once in April of 23. I recorded it once in December of, of 23. And you can see in that period of time, 50 more cards were base, were base graded. But so wow. many more of them were not. Interesting. That's, <clears throat> Keith, that's amazing. Wow. It's, it's the first blush. I, I got to say that uh, resources like this and, and pieces like this can't be built in a vacuum. No. I can think of things that are useful to me. What can you think of that would be useful for you that everybody can contribute to? If you can think of something else to get added into this, it's a wiki. We can all make it a community thing. Yeah, right. And Absolutely. then the last piece on this is automatically building the wiki. You can notice all of these... What I really did here is that all of these links, we recorded the hyperlink to, you know, where you could find this oh, information. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Because, I mean, proof's in the pudding, right? Like it's Inside yeah. sources. Yeah. <laughs> That's what this is. Again, Go GTS is where that information came sourced from. Mm -hmm. The Upper Deck EPAC has the checklist here. We have that linked up. Wow. And then when we start talking about how this page starts becoming a circle so like here with wolverine you'll notice i have wolverine linked out i just haven't done this for all the characters yet but this is to on the same wiki the character and his recorded cards inside the database <laughs> nice so you wow okay. see all this and you're like wait he's in bronze age which of course it's wolverine he's everywhere right you can mm -hmm. jump over to the bronze age page for the the written house and see what's going on with this page, which again, it's like may, I maybe I only have information. I don't have scans yet. You know, it's it's in different spots. But yeah, this yeah. was the entire. I can't remember if I put any scans up for this for this page yet, or just started recording information to have that there. Yeah, this is what Ian was talking about a long time ago. Written house would tell you who the artist was and the estimated count of how many sketches they did, because they were tiered. Each one of the artists had that. You want to chase Mitch Ballard's? There was estimated 51 to 150 that he did. Wow. See, what I love about this is, uh, my, uh, this is just my first thought, is you often, maybe not that often, you often have people who go, oh, um, I've pulled this card. Um, it's an error card of some kind. You know, is it, is it worth much? And, you know, invariably, error cards fall into one of, one of several camps. 
Um, it's either something that was done in the production, so crimping or cutting. It's either some sort of um, uh, misprint. Um, and that could be because what was sent to print was wrong. Um, or it's um, something else. Um, I'm just trying to think of an example. My brain's gone. Anyway, there, there were quite a few examples where, no, it's the entire print run. You know, there's um, um, uh, Masterpieces 2008. There's a car There's two cards that are labelled Punisher. Nick Fury, yep. Um, sorry, no, uh, two cards that feature the Punisher as the image, but one of them's labelled Nick Fury. Um, there are quite a few, actually, in one of the 2018, 2008 sets. Um, but it's, you know, it's whole print run things. And we've, we've had that very recently with um, uh, Platinum. Some of the creators' art variants that are labelled one colour but actually another. I can't remember yeah. the details now. Um, yeah. and, you know, well, the, might match the, capture. the green, uh, the green emeralds that were swapped for the silvers. On, yeah, uh, see, those are two great examples. The platinum ones that are the creator art variants that say that they're black or say they're purple printed on black, whatever that mix was. Can't remember. Is yeah. all universal, all of them that way. But the yeah. one you, Josh, is bringing up. I have a Hulk that is on the base. It's on base stock. It, it's it shows silver foiling, but it has a green emerald serial number stamped on the back. Oh, masterpieces twenty two. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. So in in those two examples, all of the platinum are equally incorrect, right? Like they're all the entire print run was printed on the wrong paper mm -hmm. for that. On the emeralds. There have only been a couple bases that have been found with the emerald stamping, but that are really base cards just stamped incorrectly. Yeah, those are those are errors, you know. Like, yeah, and to have those kind of notes and information where everybody can share and pool into that because mm. people are going to find them, people are going to see that type of thing out yeah. there, and you don't want somebody to. We've all seen it. We've seen the eBay. Yeah. Look at this error, and you're like, that's just a miscut. That's yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the printer line printed though. poorly. You know, like, yeah, and some people, you know what, the guy who wants to collect all the crimped cards because they are they were they were crimped in the pack, have fun with it. Absolutely mm -hmm. have fun with it. Oh, yeah. It's yeah, it doesn't feel like a true error card to me. Yeah, it's. It, I just don't want somebody to think they, they're they paying gem pricing. They're paying $100 for a 10-cent card, you know, kind of thing, because they didn't have the information. That's where, it's, that's where this problem gets, gets mm -hmm. into a problem. Don't trick the, the people. Yeah, yeah. The thing with the masterpieces one, I, 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 I don't know if this is the case, but I think, isn't it on along the character lines? So, for example, for Black Cat, I don't think I've seen a green. The ones I've seen pop up are on the regular silver, but some characters have genuinely popped up as green. But I've not seen Black Cat in green. If that makes sense. So it it, it implies to me that all the Black Cats are errors. And uh, certainly, if I remember correctly, no, I mean, people haven't been posting about it much because the openings have dried up, you know, mm. ahead of EPAC. You know, it's not being shown or talked about that much at the moment. Um, but certainly that's the, the kind of gist I got. And I think EPAC, if it happens at this point, I'm going to say if, not when, um, would, um, well, simply because we're a year and change out. Josh, and it hasn't happened yet, so it's not yeah. Like, no, I'm, I'm getting concerned, but you would almost imagine it. It, it, it take it for how is it not, how's that not priority to at least make that happen before oh, no. the, the ship sails away? And and here's another thing that I find fascinating. Sorry, Keith, you've got my brain going in all sorts of directions here. <laughs> well, that's, but isn't that the fun, right? You're not, yeah, I know. We're not <laughs> what about, about we're having we're back in the hobby, yeah. But yeah. what about what about cards that are um achievement cards on Ooh. epac and not all of them make it out into circulation yep. and i'm going to go cool. as far as to say um uh, this week's unbound with toad i think it is they're not all going to sell out so whilst there are 999 base cards you know one of 999 to 999 of 999 you might only have three four five hundred actually in circulation mm -hmm. I, I, I find that fascinating. Um, I, you know, yeah, you would. I'm not sure you'd ever be able to verify the exact number. But without a you lot know. of alcohol, um, access <laughs> to the upper deck 
Lawrence uh, place and well, probably an yeah. Ocean's Eleven type heist. You know? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, you, it's I think it's important information there because for something like Unbound, on a character that's maybe not as popular, given Unbound is kind of in its in its twilight days, shall we say? No disrespect to Fred and Ian. You know, the artwork's still fantastic, but you know, people have kind of calmed down with Unbound, let's face it. Yeah. Um, but a prime example, I think, is Pack Wars 2018-19, okay, which ran for, tw uh, I want to say, 12 weeks. And the 13th week, it didn't reach the end of, okay, because they sold out. Now, the achievement card for week 13 was Spider-Man. And it's numbered to 100. Yeah. But I know that when it finished, there weren't 100 spots mm -hmm. on the leaderboard. Because by that point, you know, it's been going for three months. And you know people are kind of moved on to do other stuff. Um, so not all of those 100. I think it's 100. Uh, correct me if someone will correct me if I'm wrong. But this is why this exists, so that yeah. I wouldn't have to correct myself if it's wrong. But they're not out there now. That sort of information is is held by humans. It's not on a website somewhere. It's held by us. Right. So I guess one of the reasons why you know I was excited to talk about this with Keith is everyone listening. It this is for us to pull into. Yeah. You know, help if you want. Use it if you want. You know, it's 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 meant to be open. It's meant to be there. And I'll tell you what, it's mm. it's a lot of work to build a set in here. It's yeah, it's yeah. a lot of copying and pasting. It's a lot of stuff. It's not awful, but it, it, it takes a lot of time. And you know what? There's plenty of people who are like, oh, I don't I want to do that work. Not a problem. Nobody has to do the work inside this. Yeah, yeah. It will be as strong as everybody as as what the total contributions get to. Because like, yeah, yeah. what I have here as far as like a MasterCard set list. You'll notice none of these are linked because I haven't built any pages for these mm. until you get into, I think, I think the oldest set was that Bronze Age. That, that Bronze Age was my first test run. Like, gotcha. build a page out. But this is, how many of us know all these sets? Let's, let's talk about the dark times here. Marvel Superhero Island from 1999 Oof. trading card set. You know about <laughs> it? It's <laughs> awesome. I do now. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's like a five card set that was an individual pack inside of a blister pack of comics. Yeah. Yeah. Buybacks of it will be in the next the release. It was, was <laughs> nine cards. <laughs> and we'll get this stuff kind of put in there and we'll get the. I, I made room for VS system, I made room for overpower. It's interesting you call it VS system. I call it versus, but yeah. yeah you're probably correct. <laughs> well, I think it's how you read it. It's potato, potato, isn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> but this whole thing about, again, there's Bronze Age. You can click into it. There's That's that's how this is. Oh, this um, is bonkers. No, I guess yeah. it's the clear retro page. How do you find the time? Uh, I, my hobby time has kind of changed because... I feel like I lost some of the enjoyment of opening up new cards. I open up so much for um, for business. I, I open on ah. EPAC so much to get the collection to the level I want. I'm not flipping them one by one. You know what I mean? Like I, yeah. I quickly look to hit, sort it later. Look to the hit, sort it later kind of idea. And mm. so this also became a case where I was losing the fun of the hobby. And this puts me back into the habit of enjoying the cards again. I have so many binders at home, but any of us who have a lot of binders, do you really pull them out that often to look? You know, like it feels like we don't. No. But I could flip a digital page even on my phone while I'm waiting for a plane. Mm -hmm. I could just relive a little nostalgia and have yeah. a little bit of fun there. So doing the scanning doing all of this type of integration did start as a, a problem solving for the business. How do I sell these cards? It did, you know, there, there's, there's roots in that, but then it became where I could enjoy some of the, some of the hobby. And, and like this page, one of the biggest things I want a full set of base. I think I have that and a full set autograph and I don't have that. But black widow says that there are no autograph cards on the checklist. So I want to know and not try to be running around and find the find those that don't exist, right? Like, yeah. 
Sure. It's frustrating if you think you you just can't find the last one, and then you find out, oh wait a minute, it just never. The, this exist. just yeah. happened again. This last week, we were having a conversation about comic cuts, and we got into the Marvel Beginnings uh, Ultimate uh, panels that they created. The first comic, uh, the first card sized comic panels that were in, and there are UM one to UM thirty, but two of them were not inside the Beginnings three sets. They were not there. They didn't exist. And finally, one day I found one, which was an Avengers number one, and it was distributed through Avengers Endgame. I think it was an, it was an Endgame or Avengers Assemble, as I said. Um, it was distributed there. I found one, but I didn't know about the last one. I never knew about the last one until we start up a conversation in the group, and Pancake shows proof of life that there's a Captain Marvel uh, one. It was in a Captain Marvel set. It is for Avengers number four and it exists and the one that i don't have exists and now i'm back rejuvenated looking for this again but wow because we had an open conversation because there was a place to have a conversation like we did in mccw the information came to light there's enough people out there who know information it can yeah. Help come to light. yeah yeah and it's that proof of life that's so important i've um you know, you've all got that um, kind of you know, ghost. I love the, I love this phrase. I think Josh, I don't think you were on ghost cards. You know, cards that you've heard of but you've never seen. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you believe they exist. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. Area fifty one. Yeah. Area fifty one, basically. Yeah. So, um, and for, for for me, there's two examples of that with with the masterpieces two thousand seven, two thousand eight. One of them is is it, it, did anyone has anyone actually opened or remember opening or seeing masterpieces two thousand seven? Oh yeah, because you got you got the um, UDE points, upper deck entertainment points cards. Okay, and you're probably thinking, what what are they? What were they? I mean, they're part of my masterpieces 2007 master set because they came in my masterpieces 2007. I saw on it was the Enit Non Sport Update Card Talk forum, and I've saved photos of it. One guy redeemed them. One guy, oh, right, right, two guys, but this other guy wasn't you. And he got an uncut sheet of Masterpieces 2008. I didn't get that. That would have been cool. Yeah. So wow. I know that at least one uncut sheet from Masterpieces 2008 was issued in circulation, but I've never seen it since or anywhere. Well, I can go back and look at that post because it's still there. But I guess what I'm saying is I know that one made it out. Um, but how many others made it out? Because I've never seen them on eBay. I've never seen anyone else post them. You know, and you know, you know, with how busy MCCW has been over the last six years and change, if something's never been posted in group before, I'll comment and say I've never seen this posted before because it's it's unusual <laughs> with all that time with the breadth of people that have been in that group um and the other one is uh masterpieces 2008 b had writer autos mm -hmm. as its chase set and they are they go up then they, they they almost fill three nine card pages okay yep. and th this is on scoundrel as well um two of them never got signed and that so would be never the Brian Michael Bendis one? Yep. And I can't remember the other name. The other one is Warren Ellis. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I have spaces with a post-it note with the code name for the card in both of those slots. In case at any point there's, you remember that um, Atari dig where they dug up all the ET cartridges from the desert? Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I, at some point, I want someone to demolish the building next to Upper Deck in Carlsbad and dig up at, like loads of plastic sacks <laughs> of all the stuff that they ended up buried into landfill when they had their clear out of their entertainment department in the late 40s. Um, because I'm absolutely certain, listen, I mean, it probably all got shredded and burned or whatever, but at some point those cards would have existed even before Signature. Mm -hmm. You know, they would have, you know, they, they didn't get, I mean, they're sticker autos, um, they're not on card, but for me that's 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 a proper ghost card because yeah. it was planned it was on a, a version of the checklist at one point so one of my ghost cards is from that same set if you remember uh was series two the one that had the memorabilia relics from fantastic, fantastic four ones yeah yeah mm -hmm. 
there are different colors for some of the costumes. Yes. I am missing still one of the Jessica Alba Invisible Woman colors. Oh. I have three dooms. I think I have the blue, the black, and the, like, it's kind of a copper. Mm-hmm. But there is a reported out there, I think Jessica Alba is supposed to have both blue and black. And I think that I'm I'm missing one of the colors. I know I'm wow. missing one of the colors. I, I think that's the one I'm, I'm remembering. Wow. Well, that's my so, guess. That's my... I, 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 I love fun stuff like that. There's 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 an example of that kind of thing um, in Lost, and these have been seen. But one of the actors, and it's like a it's like a, a one episode actor who you won't ever you know if you look at it you'll be like who is that guy? I've never seen him in anything. But he chose to sign his cards in black, silver, and gold. Off his own back, he was sent like an excellent number of auto cards to sign on card because it was ink works, and he signed. 25 of them in gold. I'm making these numbers up, but he, he literally did tear it. He signed so many of them in gold, a few more of them in silver, and the rest of them in, in Bogo black. That's fantastic. Like, but he did it off his own back. Mm, and it's like, it's, it. a, it's, a, it's a thing. I think I think Maggie Grace from Lost Series 1, there's a number of different color and different thickness of, of pen as well. And yeah, so yeah, it's fascinating that stuff. Wow. Okay. I've, <clears throat> I've always wondered because I thought I remember when. Um... The, uh, because I've been digging into these uh, medallions lately, and the 22 Avengers, when that set first came out, I thought the checklist had said that the Amethyst cards were numbered out of 35, but there's never any numbers on them. Um, but it's like the Amethyst cards in the other sets are numbered out of 35. So, did they just. Were they numbered out of 35? Was there only 35 of them, but they just didn't get the numbers on the back? This is an area I love of information. I will, I will tell you how I look at this. There are three levels to new set information. The first level of new set information is the dealer sell sheets, the announcements that come out from Upper Deck. They're usually, I follow most of them on gogts.net. Yeah. That's where, I, where they seem to write up the article the best. Um, you'll see the same thing kind of copied on Beckett, you know, like that they'll, they'll have the same type of similar one where they start building their page there. Um, that information the thing, is what's... Sorry, sorry to interrupt. The other thing about GoGTS is that you can download the Excel version as yes. well as the PDF yes. when the checklist comes out. Yep. So yeah. the first blush of information is what is sent out, and it's supposed to be the dealer sell sheets. And it's supposed to be what dealers base their borders off of. It's what the, the information comes out as. It's preliminary. It's early. Production has not been finalized quite yet. There may be some things that are still uh, going through um, approval, and that's where Ian will always be frustrated about what his Black Cat art is from uh, Spider-Man Metal. Because um, <laughs> Chase Pat Campbell is the art that they used on the sell sheet, wasn't it? And they, yeah, you I ended up getting the Umberto Ramos. Um, um, I think so. Yeah, I was actually sent a mock-up of it from. <laughs> From upper deck as well. I'm oh, probably not supposed to say said, that. They were, they were distributing it as the yellow example. It was the yellow. Yeah, I think I think I think they did post it on Instagram or one Instagram yeah. post as well. It, it was just wasn't a real card. Mm. Um, level two information. Then two weeks before a set is dropped, they should release the checklist, and that's where again, Coach ETS puts it up. You can download the Excel or the PDF. Those are the same things that they send out to dealers. Um, that's the same email there. Usually then Beckett and Cardboard Connection will take that information and reprocess it so it's more um, web friendly. and more editorial as well. A lot yeah. of people check that out. Mm-hmm. Then the third level of information, and this always happens, is that I call it the physical verification. As an example, I was just recently opening up um, cards from like uh, Flair Ultra Wolverine. I was opening up other sets there are changes to that checklist. The checklist has quite often a mistake here or there. Um, there is Clear Ultra Avengers, as you mentioned. Uh, or no, I'm sorry. Uh, what was the first one with Ultra Abilities? I guess that was Midnight Suns. I think it was the Ultra Abilities were the first one recently with that. Um, says there's 30 cards. They're all numbered, you know, one of 30, but there's really only 25. The last five don't exist. But you have to have seen enough product and seen that now by the time it got to EPAC, the checklist got corrected to find out that that information is there. 
And sometimes the mistakes are minor. Sometimes the uh, Flair Ultra Wolverine calling the uh, the Nick Fury card, the Nick Fury Jr. card thing, that kind of thing. That's that's a minor little thing. But when Spider-Man Metal Checklist came out and it had Spot on it, and then that wasn't, it was an extra Spider-Man. That's obviously, it didn't get approved. It didn't get through licensing. They had to scramble and find something else, but nobody told the checklist person. Mm-hmm. And the checklist went out with the wrong information. Mm-hmm. It's corrected by the time it got to EPAC, but these are all the different steps and, and all this. So it's a big, big deal to make sure that your final source of what you're using the information for gets updated. Because if the checklist goes out wrong, Beckett and Cardboard Connection are not correct. By the time yeah. it's built into trading card database, that's usually being done by a user, and that's usually being built off of the physical product that they have. So that's usually a better and more solid resource. Sure. That's interesting. interesting. Mm. Oh, it's just fascinating stuff. Um, what's what would you um, what would you kind of hope? Off the back of off the back of this episode would happen next, Keith. Obviously, you'll you'll carry on working with it, but you're only one guy. I imagine there's been some people who know about this kind of feeding in as well. Possibly Izzy is Izzy on board with this as well. I I, I noticed him. You know, um, getting quite uh, excited. I want I want to give a, a little bit of a thanks. Uh, it's I, I get the name wrong. I we all know it, it's it's florist Holmist. Is that? One thing of the the sketch card artist. Oh, Flores, Flores, Flores. Yeah. Uh, he came in here. Um, he came into this this page. Let me let me back up and 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 give a little bit of a. Like, we didn't have much for sketch cards, but he actually created his own page. Awesome. And started putting this information. Oh in wow. Here. Yeah. Wow. Because other people will see that and follow suit. I mean, I love this kind of thing. Like again, my idea, my first design was you come to the 19 flare cards and you know you just have one example up here right mm-hmm. but he's like no nah, i'll put up different characters i did i think that this is amazing i think that if they want to put the the time and effort into this type of thing fantastic i think this That's is brilliant. great um yeah i think that anyone who would like to turn around and to contribute and help and and work on this i'm more than happy to answer questions i'm more than happy to discuss how we've done this i'm more than happy to show but Literally, if you have a login to Fandom, you can edit the website today. That seems dangerous. It seems like somebody could come in and deface it and all this. Well, there's some rollback techniques that you yeah. know, keep the thing safe and all this. So I'm not I'm not worried about that. I would much rather have it just wide open. Um, it's not on post approval. You know, I you know it's it's it definitely you know like it would be a lot to manage if we started getting defaced or something like that. We'd have to mm-hmm. we'd have to get it changed, but. Uh, I'd much rather have it open that anybody who would like to turn around and contribute information to come in here and do it. I do want, I'd love to have the conversation about why I think like that circular motion to the website about you can click into a card and click into a character and click into the, and see a checklist here and all this, why it's valuable for different people and why we over time want to do all the work and want to do all of that type of information. Um, but at the same time, if anybody just says, hey, can we just get checklists up? Can we just get, forget the scans. I can't do scans. I'm not, I'm not into that and all this. I mean, if somebody typed in the 1990 checklist, I probably have all of the images and I could add those as, I could come behind that. And then someone else who has that, that name of all the, who the artists were and everybody that worked on the card could come in and put that information in. Yeah, I'd love to talk, is it, was it James Edel? who was doing the yeah. um, the source, because uh, that yeah, was yeah. another big deal here was, I'm going to go back to that. Um, uh, I started doing it on the, where is it? Yeah, the uh, Bronze Age here. The art that's on the book and sourcing the art to where it came from, which was easier on this set because like the cards say so. But then I yes. also would link out here to it would jump up to the actual Marvel database of comics, right? So you gotcha. could see the comic that it came from. Wow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and this, again, this is nothing I did. This is nothing, this is now to a different, you know, wiki that's got great information because this Marvel mm-hmm. database here has been way filled in with all the good goods about the comics. But if you wanted to collect that black cat from Spider-Man, um, the, the comic that matches it well 
this will tell you what comic you're looking for. Yeah, and yeah. You can kind of chase things that way. So there's 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 room for anyone who wants to help and provide information. If you would like to provide information, but it's like, oh, I'm just not tech savvy, I would absolutely take that information by private message or email, and I would come here. And I do think that the so far, because I I've I haven't had a lot of people involved in this yet. We haven't started crediting who's been working on the site. It's kind of hidden in the site as to which logged in account did what to, to the stuff. But I do think that we need to have that on there. And all I, it's something, again, from House of Checklist that I really appreciate when he would talk about who gave him information. You know, the uh, community credit needs to be there. Sure. So it's it's a uh, uh, it's it's definitely something there that if, if it sparks your interest, if you'd like to turn around and put in an hour every six months on doing a couple of things to make it, uh, I, I would take all the help possible. Sorry, Josh, I've covered your face there. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Keith, I was going to say with the, the, the sketch artists that, you know, when they come in, I think that's a huge opportunity for a reputable archive to have, you know, um, you know, to have these artists come in, post any of the, any of their works on officially licensed set and, really again like you say you know cyclical chain there um it people get jump onto some of these artists like like character collectors and if they can if they can have a you know an area to find to go in through and scan and um one of the other questions i have is is there a, a opportunity for one of those larger i've seen one of these scanners the high speed scanners mm -hmm. um, a lot of the sports card guys use them mm -hmm. and they're they're amazing um, but it's still a process. Is there one or will there be one for like your, your 100 PT and your 135s? So I know that there's a better one. When I, when I went shopping for the scanners, I bought the Epson model, which is kind of a cheaper one. It's like about $300. Um, and it works really well for sheet fed. You have to be, you always want to test it first on certain cardstock. Um, like yeah. some of the cardstock picks up printer line, you know, roller lines and all this. Mm -hmm. So you kind of try it on some you know, cheap card you got a lot of to begin with. Um, <clears throat> I've seen the one that's really high speed and it looks like it takes top loaders. So I think maybe that that would, but I, when I was looking at that, um, that one, it was, it was considerably more. I want to say it was like a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. So I didn't buy that one. It's possible. Um, okay. I will say what I have done um, for some of those sets, because I've, I've taken a lot of shots of, uh, Midnight Suns so far, and I've started working on uh, Fleer Ultra Wolverine. Um, Dennis Goad's uh, photo method works great. It's it's, doesn't good method. Have, it's it's much slower, obviously, than scanning a stack of cards. But um, setting up a, a, what Dennis sets up with a, a light source underneath, a light ring on top, you know, the camera positioned and all this, that's what I that's what I follow to do those hundred, yeah. those uh, those thicker point cards right now. And that would obviously work all the way up to, like, say, the... Um, the shadow box cards yeah well, the i was Venom. thinking about ian's archive card yeah what's that uh the one from flitter ultra spider-man that's got the webbing yes that's yes like the manufacturer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so things like that that um i know that that method will be necessary for those and i probably i think it's even necessary for the opposite side where i have to do those chibis and those uh mm. capsule cards uh because you know they're just too small to go through a scan yeah you can, and you can do this, but every time you do something, I'm obviously looking at doing this in mass. So I was looking at what's the functionality that'll get done the most cards as fast as possible kind of idea. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Otherwise you'll be there all, all the rest of your I, lifetime. You got a lot of cards to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it's a lot actually, of cards I, I out did, there. I did just start uploading in the next, the next page I know I'm going to work on because and I, I hop all over, but I'm going to do the 66 Donruss page. I have a set of those that I scanned. Nice. And um, I want to put them up even if they're out in the mintiest of mint conditions. They're not bad. They're not bad, but there's a couple of them on there that you can see where the writing was erased from <laughs> the person who filled in the word bubble on those. <laughs> but, uh, That's it's, okay. Uh, well, they're placeholders. It, it'll be fun to have. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, when a card set's that old. Oh, this is fascinating. I love this. Um, I, I, I thank you, Keith, for for doing this and getting yeah. this and running. Yeah, nice work. It's really a lot of effort, and it's well well executed. It's going to be really useful. And, it, and can I it, can I also say thank you for you've done some brilliant stuff in the last 
year. Um, the examples I can think of off the top of the head is a couple of days ago, you posted just a, a guide for flair, for people chasing flair on EPAC and what to look for and what, what to do. What a curse that was. Which so I posted that up about the achievements because there's some really cool achievements this time. Yeah, yeah. And then I get contacted by a friend and he's like, let's do it. Help me get these achievements. So I've been um, I've been working the, the midnight hours on chasing wow. down. <laughs> we're close. We're, we're, we're going to get there. It's 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 going to happen. Maybe even That's off to you. But, uh, That's off to you. It's, it's a blast. To, I'm having, you know, uh, you find the ways to, to, to enjoy your habit, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty important to, 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 to find enjoyment out of it. Yeah. And the other one was the, um, I think this was brilliant, so thank you for doing this, it was Fleer Throwbacks. You express shipped examples of the cards oh, yeah. to yourself and then did a, did a live stream on Instagram, which I think was brilliant because it was so fresh out even at that point. Um, and um, will you be doing the same again for... Fleer throwbacks, 1958 to 1962, exclusively announced by Joe Upperdeck on the podcast a few weeks ago. I am so looking forward to it because it's the <laughs> anything that's old. <laughs> I, would, I would be in. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's awesome. going to be interesting. We're going to be. We haven't recorded it yet, but this coming Friday, we're recording with um, TJ and Joe from Upperdeck. That's great, and they're going to I, tell us all I, about it this again feeds into information so it's it's always talking about and and little tidbits i i always walk that line you know i, I talk to a lot of people I, I have that about you know spoiler versus you know info kind of idea and uh i don't i don't feel bad if i'm spoiled but i'm also the the type of person i don't need to know it all i don't need to be spoiled on something it's okay if i enjoy it when i just get it in my hands for the first time kind of thing but um we all know we love hearing the information. We love hearing the announcements. We love seeing the examples. Um, it's it, we're still up in the air right now. From where we're recording right now, we have not seen Metal Avengers in our hands yet, but it could be in the next forty-eight hours. The conversations wow. about whether it's delayed wow. or not don't line up, and it may not be delayed. <laughs> FYI, <laughs> oh, 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 hoping to have confirmation tomorrow on that. I was going to say, you heard it here last, because this episode will be up. <laughs> it will be old news. My goodness, mate. I love it. I love it. It's, it's, it's three days from now. Okay. Exciting, exciting stuff. Wow. Right. I, I'm going to wrap this up, quite frankly, because I've got no idea how to end one of these. Uh, let me t take this off uh, here. Um, now, you're on YouTube as well, and I've already got one of these prepared. There you go. There's a nice right. little uh, to prop, uh, now. You've, you've only got the one video up there yet, but I imagine you're going to do more of these. Is that the idea? Yeah. So I'm launching up next month. I'll be doing formats. Uh, uh, they're going to vary in size. Uh, my first video out is going to be the intro, of who I am, why I'm why I'm speaking to you, and then I have some shows planned. I the the plan is is to turn around and very similar to what you do here. It's uh, you know big tip of the cap to what you you built on here. You have the right guest on for the right topic. You know, I think that that's really important. It's not going to be a situation where I know everything, and I would really love to have people who know the right stuff uh, yeah. enhance the show kind of idea. So there's going to be topics all over the place, a lot of set reviews. You know, it, again, that will help me promote selling sets that I have here in my store because people can't tell enough about it until I just look at the front card in the box. Yeah. Um, all the way up to you know having a um, hobby conversations, right? And one of the big ones I really think of that I really want to get. This is going to be a very meaty, meaty conversation. But how to value a card? And what I mean is not a definitive answer about looking at all this. It's it's more of a conversation about understanding that there may be five to ten values on every card. And what I mean is is that there's there's the lowest price available. There is the last sold price there is a historic average price there's also a this is personal to me i'll never sell it price but we all know that otherwise known as my fuck you price <laughs> you know, like there's be, I, I, w I could never see myself giving up my 2018 clear all tracks man after all i've been through to put together what i have but the right person with the right briefcase would prove me a liar right like it's sure. just, I, of course 
let's be honest. So again, but when people, I think one of the biggest things, and when we, we have arguments about values, are we really talking the same level here? Are we talking about like, I'd like to talk to you about the card value because I'm willing to sell it at what today's price is and I'm willing to be 5% and for the last price. Or I'm not willing to do that. I want I want this premium price because I think it's going to return to that value. And again, you can just say, no, I'm not interested in buying. But having the conversation openly and having the information out there. And I think that the biggest deal is, is that we just quickly jump to the answers and we don't understand the whys between each other. And it causes a lot of conflict. Yeah. And I'd love to turn around and and kind of poke holes about that so everybody has that little bit of a oh maybe that's what he meant and we get along a little bit better and it this camps against each other is the dumbest idea we've ever had in marvel cards agreed the marvel card community is so small it's not worth turning around and alienating any person inside of it it's not worth uh turning around and and and, and making a, a case or uh it's got to be my guys that get cards and not you guys that get cards. it's all crazy it's crazy talk in life and all this, and we 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 all need to respect each other's way to enjoy the hobby. Yeah, we're all on the same team here. Yeah, and, and you know what? I say that fully well. I don't mind the person who's out there to make money. I really don't. It's not what a lot of us are used to. It's not what we because you know, again, I don't buy a lot of cards to make money. I sell my extra cards, is mm -hmm. and that's kind of my difference. But. You know what? The person who wants to turn around and do that and wants to bring cards to light and they want to crack a lot of boxes to find the big hits, maybe they're making the mid-level stuff available for me. Like part of the ecosystem can work, you know, but not if we're going to be able to show the strokes. Yeah. Mm. Sure. So. Well, I, amen to that. Um, Keith, you've been amazing. Thank you for getting up early and jumping on. Um, and Keith, um, on that note that you just kind of left us with, what do you want to say to our audience? I would tell everybody to uh, enjoy the Gorgeous. And, and cue the outro. Thanks for listening, folks. If you enjoyed it, please take a moment to like, subscribe and share on YouTube or the podcast platform of your choice. The podcast can be found by Googling at the MCC pod, which is also a handle on Facebook and Instagram. If you have an idea for podcast topics or want to be on the podcast, please reach out via social media or email us at the mccpod at gmail.com. Our Facebook communities are MCCW, Marvel Card Collectors Worldwide, and MMC, Marvel Masterpieces Collectors. Creative design and logos for the podcasting groups are by artist Michael Munshaw. You can find him on Instagram at artofm2. The great music we use is called Rocket Power by Kevin McLeod. Thanks to the collectors, artists and creators who support the Marvel Cards Fan Collective. We'll see you next time and remember, collect your way and always, always be kind to others. Make mine Marvel and enjoy collecting.